Praise the Lord and happy Friday and a good morning to each and every one of you as we come together once again for our morning prayer and devotion. The sun is shining and the birds are chirping here in southeast Missouri this morning. And even if that was not the case, if it was a sky full of blackness and uh, wind and rain this morning, um, still this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day that is full of divine purpose and a day that has been ordered of God for our lives. And we're going to make the most of it this morning as we come together for another great time of prayer. Good morning to those of you that are already signing on so quickly today. Good to see Penny and uh, my mom and dad with us this morning. God bless you. Um, and I see a couple others on here. Kristen, good to see you this morning. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we have some wonderful praise reports uh, to share today. Uh, Tiffany Fowler, for those of you that have been following this situation, uh, she is now off of the ventilator, breathing on her own, breathing completely normally, sitting up and talking to people on the phone. She has just experienced a miraculous turnaround, and uh, her baby, which had to be delivered by C-section a month prematurely because of uh, the situation that Tiffany experienced with COVID, uh, the baby's doing well, eating at 50%, and is expected to be able to go home sometime next week. So we give God praise for that miracle along with uh, their family today. Uh, Beth Wheatley's nephew Dylan is doing much better. Gerald Yeely, who we've been praying for um, for several months now, in fact, since almost the beginning of um, this morning prayer and devotion that we started back in, I guess, late February or early March. Uh, he is doing well in his recovery. We thank God for that update. Sylvia Laramore reports that her daughter is doing much better. So just so much this morning to thank God for. And uh, we're going to keep praying uh, for so many of these needs today. Uh, some of them situations we've been praying for for quite some time and others that are added just daily new needs that come in. And God cares about each and every one of these situations. Things we're praying about today, we've had some New requests come in overnight. Terry Adams' son, Richard, went to the doctor yesterday, and he has to see a neurologist. Donna Reedy just suffered a stroke. This is a friend of Carmen's family, and she asked that we pray for healing, for restoration of function and vision for Donna this morning. Faye Willis, uh, this is my aunt, asked us to remember her cousin in prayer uh, because she's having surgery today for cancer. COVID-19 requests include Jimmy Roberts, Mike Carter, Robert, and Colette, uh, staff and residents of Colonial Home Assisted Living in Donovan, uh, Joey Etheridge uh, with several family members battling COVID, Aaron, Amber, Maddie, and Cohen, Evangelist Greg Randall, uh, Brother Kevin Prince, uh, Jeff Stewart, the Darla McLean, Betty Wayne, the patients and staff at Spring Meadows, Bishop Johnson, and uh, Pastor Daryl and Sheila Fair are, at last I heard, recovering well, but we'll continue to pray for them until we hear the all clear on that. Let's continue praying for our president this morning, for his administration, for our Congress, for our leaders on every national and local level. Um, let's pray for full and complete economic recovery. We want to continue praying for nursing home residents and shut-ins and pray for protection for our children who are returning to school. I know here in Puxico they start school next Wednesday, and right now we're kicking that off with our annual Vacation Bible School. It started last night and continues through the weekend, and uh, I'm just so thankful for what God is doing among the children of our community. If you're in the Puxico area, um, please know that you're welcome to join us for Vacation Bible School. They made every effort to be able to socially distance the kids and the adults and by reconfiguring our sanctuary for this special time. And uh, of course, it's very difficult to um, socially distance children, but we do the best we can. It's kind of like herding cats. Uh, 
them. It's just hard to keep children from being up close and personal. But we had a great time last night. So thankful for our children's ministry staff and the good work they do. And we're looking forward to the rest of the weekend. Uh, let's remember this morning to pray for uh, healing in our nation. So many divisions, so many um, opposing viewpoints and people willing to just sacrifice any uh, sense of decency for the sake of their cause. And we live in a godless uh, society today that's running away from God as fast as it can and we need to be running just as hard toward him and trusting in him for our nation. Uh, spiritual needs that we need to pray for this morning many parents asking for prayer for their children, their grandchildren Marsha Morris, one of those requests today, Debbie Biddick is asking for prayer for her daughter Jamie and family Pam Pulliam's children still need our prayers for salvation Terry Adams' children Peggy Fiedler's children, uh, Jennifer and Brenda's family needs our prayers today. And we'd also ask that you pray for uh, Jennifer's husband, Scott, for a job opportunity, a couple of job opportunities he's considering right now. Let's pray for God's will in that. Uh, Tasha Ray still wants prayer for her husband and sister for salvation. Mark and Caitlin need the Lord. Uh, Judy and Mike Williams' daughter, Jennifer, uh, we need to pray for her as well. Josiah, Lori Arbo's mother, Carmen's daughter, Grace, uh, several teenagers that she's uh, been praying for and working with. Connor, Haley, Evie, Rose, and Carl all need salvation. Art Chandler, Sylvia's family, and Beulah's uh, family today all need our prayers for salvation or deliverance or uh, restoration so let's continue to believe together. Those who are battling cancer, Terrace, friend Beverly, Deb Clydens, Kim Gladden, Evelyn Marshall, Jamie Dixon, Debbie Biddick's daughter, Jessica, Calvin, Josh Soberg, Lorelei, Caden, Jenna, Tucker, Linda Fox, David Harris, Diane Escher, Michael Boland, Dwayne Lewis, uh, a friend of Terry Adams, Kim Stinson, Wanda Barnes, Brother Steve Williford, Brother Anthony Trimble, and Delbert Bryant. Other physical needs this morning that we're continuing to pray for. Elder Brother and Sister Perkins need our continued prayers for healing, strength, and encouragement. James Pearson and others who are battling high blood pressure. Robbie Northrup, uh, representative of those who are struggling with respiratory uh, diseases today. He battles with COPD. Bill Eldreth, myasthenia gravis, and other health problems uh, Dustin Phelps, recovering from kidney transplant surgery. We want to continue to pray for uh, pain relief, continued strength and healing as uh, he is doing well following that surgery the kidney uh, took and is operating correctly. So we give God thanks and praise for that. Judy Williams requesting prayer for her sister's three-year-old grandson, Abel Ray. He was born with a uh, disorder called PKU in which uh, he cannot eat protein. And so he needs uh, healing and, he, and we need a, a cure for that disease. Rebecca Mitchell's uncle is recovering from a recent mild heart attack. Rick House and uh, Emily Stanley both suffer with type two diabetes and Rick has several upcoming appointments that he's been going through right now with a heart murmur and a um, undiagnosed heart attack at some point in the past. Leslie Pride needs a healing touch. Tara Vaughn needs continued prayers for her health. Judy McDaniel's daughter Tammy has some health issues. Renee uh, still battling with pain and limited mobility uh, due to hip and knee problems. Pastor Del Holman's mother needs our continued prayers as she's been in the hospital recently with pneumonia. Michael Parrott, we're believing for his healing from Crohn's disease. David Nichols experiencing swelling in feet and legs. Angela Yandell, this is uh, Jennifer Jones, one of her sisters, and uh, she's ha been having some health issues that are related to stress and medication side effects. We want to believe for her healing today. Uh, Shima uh, is a young mother, very ill with pneumonia. Uh, Terry Adams is needing prayer for herself for health issues as well as her grandson, Ethan. Uh, those who are battling Parkinson's, representative of, of 
those needs today, Ron Bryant, Beulah Ziegler, Russ, and Tim, and so many others battling with the effects of Parkinson's, and we continue to believe God for their healing today. Phil and Karen Sampson and their family have multiple issues going on and need healing for Caitlin, Kendra, and Renata Ortiz, um, need prayers for health issues. As far as we know, the, they have, they're recovering from uh, COVID, but they have other health issues going on as well. So let's continue to hold them up in prayer. Uh, continue recovery. We're believing with Cody, Nick, Steve, Johnny Ray, Ethan. Uh, I mentioned Gerald uh, earlier in the praise reports. Let's continue praying for him on his road to recovery. Uh, Dwayne Rogers' mother-in-law going through rehab from uh, hip surgery. Adrian Neely, Sylvia Larimore's daughter, Rue, Brandy Bryant, and Brandon Jolly. Uh, unspoken request today. Pam Bunch has a special request for a family member. Terry Bunch and Bill Eldreth both have unspoken needs. Uh, we continue to pray for peace and comfort for the Woolard family uh, at the passing of Rick Woolard's father, the Rogers family in the loss of their uh, baby, and the Carter family in the loss of Larry Carter's father. Uh, also the family of pastor's wife, uh, American Carter. We want to remember them in prayer as she was found dead uh, very tragically from apparent suicide. Other needs that we're praying for today, Matt and Michaela Perkins trying to start a family. Sally Waller's granddaughter and her family. Bethany Hughes is going through some difficulties right now and desires our prayers. Mandy Plowman, the same kind of request, struggling with some things lately. Uh, Cheryl Brenner is suffering from mental health issues and has asked us specifically to pray for that for her life. Uh, continued prayers are needed for Debbie Biddick's granddaughter, Katie, and also her daughter, Jamie, who have both been sick this past week. Um, and we want to pray for relief from the wildfires going on in California. Uh, several have lost their lives in that situation. And we want to pray specifically for a wildfire that's been going on near Travis Air Force Base. Uh, pray protection for Chris and Ann. This is Kristen's sister-in-law. Also for Peter, who's a staff sergeant there, and Pastor Alvarez and the Fairfield Church family. So many things that we need to pray about this morning, and what a great team we have today uh, praying with us. And I'll greet those who have signed on since we started here, um, and since I recognize the first group, uh, Sister Jean Morgan, so good to have you with us today. Uh, Judy and Mike, God bless you. Marcia, good to see you. My mother-in-law, Beulah, Sister Pam. Thank God for each and every one of you, and um, you're a very important part of what God is doing through the ministry of prayer. There's nothing that can replace this particular ministry, and there's nothing really glamorous about it, uh, and so many people do not see the importance of it, but I'm glad that you do, and uh, others are going to benefit from our prayers today. Let's go to the Word of the Lord um, and reflect a little bit more on our final lesson, our final devotion from Matthew chapter 14. And we've been talking, you can follow along there, I believe beginning of verse 23, a very familiar story, and I won't quote the scriptures this morning, but we'll just briefly uh, run through this again. It's the story of uh, Jesus uh, going into the mountain to pray. His disciples get in a boat, or in a ship, and go out into the sea. And um, while they're there, uh, while they're separated from Jesus in that moment, a storm comes up upon the sea and uh, they find themselves in a very dire situation and in this situation as they are toiling all through the night just trying to preserve their own lives in the fourth watch of the night Jesus comes walking to them on the water on top of the waves on top of their problems walking right through the wind and um, and so of course they're confused at first and fearful thinking that they're seeing a ghost seeing a spirit and um, Jesus calls out to them and tells them not to be afraid that it's him. And when he makes himself known, Peter impulsively says, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And so Peter climbs down out of the boat and walks on the water to go to Jesus. Now we get caught up in the middle of the story very quickly where it says he began to sink, but nothing will change those words that Matthew recorded that said he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He also walked back 
on the water with Jesus. So twice Peter walked on the water and had a brief moment of failure in between when his eyes were distracted from Jesus and he began to focus upon his problem. And here's the inconvenient truth that is key to overcoming your impossibilities this morning. You must be willing to get out of the boat when everyone else is staying put. Remember, the boat was full of several other disciples. None of them were getting out of the boat, but yet Peter alone made the decision that regardless of what others were going to do or not do, he was going to take that step of faith. The boat is always full of other disciples who are not about to join you in your attempt to walk on water. For some reason, many people are more afraid of the possibility of failure than they are of a boat that is too full of water to float much longer. Talking about the miraculous is easy. Actually experiencing the miraculous might require you to become uneasy. I'm reminded of uh, just a powerful night that we experienced at our church on a midweek. And of course, midweeks tend to be laid back. At our church, they're very laid back. We limit the service basically to one hour because of uh, kids needing to get up early for school. And so we're just all business. We just get right in there, very little singing and, and that. We just kind of set the tone and go right into the lesson and use most of the entire hour for the lesson. But on this particular Thursday night, I felt to uh, teach on receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit and provide instructions for that. And at the end of the lesson, I suddenly had this crazy idea on a midweek service night that it just wouldn't be right to end that service without asking if anyone wanted to receive the Holy Ghost right then. And when I made that invitation, we had several students that were there from the Mingo Job Corps Center and a few of them immediately got up. I told them, if you want the Holy Ghost, um, just get up from where you are and come and sit on this front row. And I'm going to give you some further instructions to pray to receive the Holy Ghost. And so without hesitation, these three young men got up and came to the front row. And um, so they began to pray. And on that night, no music going on, no uh, anything in the background to really aid except for just the prayers of God's people. One of those immediately received the Holy Ghost. One repented and was baptized that very night. And another one who had never sought for the Holy Ghost before um, got to the point of stammering lips and he left the service feeling closer to God than he had in his entire life. And then the next night, while he was on center, when he was um, back at the job corps, um, we had a uh, youth activity or a children's activity uh, the next night uh, for the community and outreach and uh, Dylan came to the outreach that night when he when he got off of the church van he came to me immediately he was beaming and he said I gotta tell you what happened to me last night after he got home after the service he began to pray um, again on his own and as he prayed God filled him with the Holy Ghost Amen. God can do powerful things if we're just willing to get out of the boat, if we're just willing to take a risk. And I want to say to someone this morning, it's time for you to take a little risk. It's time for somebody to say today, you know, you guys can stay in this creaky boat if you want to, but I think I'm going to walk on water and I'm going to go to Jesus. It's time for somebody to say, I don't think anybody has ever tried this before, but I believe if I could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I would be made whole. Someone has to set the precedent. Someone has to step out. Um, my dear old pastor, Brother O.S. Elledge, who has uh, gone on many years ago now to meet his reward, but I was privileged to sit under his ministry for several years. He used to say this quite often. He said, I'm going to get out of my rut if I have to climb a tree. And that's exactly what a little man by the name of Zacchaeus did, isn't it? Luke 19, verse 3 and 4 tells us that he sought to see Jesus who he was, and he could not for the press or for the crowd that was around Jesus because he was little of stature. But he ran before and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him because he was to pass that way. As long as you stay in the crowd, you will stay a sinner. You will stay a cheat. You will stay a thief. That's what Zacchaeus' issues were. But if you will put forth the effort to get up above the crowd so that you can see Jesus instead of all the other flawed people 
that you use to justify yourself. You won't have to continue being what you have been. Amen. The key is for us to step out by faith and to keep our eyes on Jesus. I ask you this morning, as you watch this video, whether in real time or later on, and I encourage those watching to share this. Maybe there's someone in your life that needs to hear this today. There's someone that needs to come out from the crowd, someone that needs to believe that God can change their lives. I encourage you today, step out of that boat and come up higher spiritually than you ever have before. I feel a powerful presence of God here with us this morning. I feel the witness of the Spirit with us today as we go to prayer, and I believe that God is going to minister. I'm emboldened, and my faith has increased this morning as I've heard these miracles, these praise reports of things we've been praying for, and we've seen the answers come to pass. And now let's be faithful today to lift up these other needs before the throne of grace and believe God to move in every need. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, for this is your kingdom it's your power and it's your glory. It all belongs to you and not unto us, O Lord, but unto thy name give glory today. Hallelujah. For your truth's sake, for your name's sake today, we pray that you would show yourself powerful, that your will would be done in the earth, that your kingdom would come in every life, in every situation today. Hallelujah. We submit our will, Lord, to your will. We pray, God, that your thoughts would become our thoughts right now. Lord, that your spirit would pray through us, Lord, to intercede for these needs. We know, God, that as we submit ourselves to you, we will not ask amiss. We will not ask for things that we would consume with worldly lust and our own desires, God. But we're going to pray your desires, for it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's not your will that we continue in sickness and in despondency and in despair and in depression, but it's your will for there to be healing for every heart, for every mind, for every body today. And I speak healing right now. I release faith, Lord, into this prayer meeting. We release the gifts of healing to operate. We release right now the working of miracles among your people, believing you God, Lord, for healing of every kind of sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. We pray for Terry's son, Richard, believing God for healing for his body. For Donna Reedy, Lord, you're able to help her to recover from this stroke. We pray for restoration of function right now, for restoration of her vision. We pray for Faye's cousin today going in for surgery for cancer. We believe that you're the healer of cancer, and we believe that you're going to guide the surgeon today, that they will get every bit of cancer, every bit of tumor, every uh, abnormal cell today. Hallelujah. And God, you're going to spare this person in, through this today. In Jesus' name, we pray for each person that's battling COVID. Jimmy Roberts, Mike Carter, uh, Robert and Colette, uh, uh, the, the staff at, and the people at Colonial Home Assisted Living, Joey Etheridge's family members, uh, Evangelist Greg Randall, Brother Kevin Prince, uh, Jeff Stewart, Missionary Darla McClain, uh, Sister Betty Wayne, the patients and staff at Spring Meadows uh, there in the Nashville area, Lord, for Bishop Johnson and for Pastor Daryl and Sheila Fair. We thank you, God, for these in their different stages of recovery. And we give you thanks for the miracle that you work for Tiffany, God. We give you all the praise and the glory for what you alone are doing in the land. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, for our president. We pray for our vice president, for every member of their cabinet, Lord, and the administration and the work that they're doing. We pray for our Congress. We pray for our state leaders and our local leaders down to the community level, our mayors and our our city councils, Lord. We pray for direction, Lord, through the remaining part of this pandemic. We thank you, God, that we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We thank you that the numbers are starting to go down again. And we believe you, God, for complete resolution of this situation and for complete recovery of our economy today. We pray that many people would turn to you, God, in this time of distress, uh, and that the church would be stronger than ever before as we have found new ways to 
spread your word. We pray against unrest and violence and division in our nation. We pray against exploitation of minority groups today. We pray against the evil, Lord, that's among those who are in powerful positions, spiritual wickedness in high places. But God, you've given us the power through the weapons of our warfare, of one of which is this prayer group today. And we believe you for victory over every foul spirit, over every hindrance uh, to your work in the name of Jesus. We pray for deliverance for the captive today. Hallelujah, Lord, for them to be set at liberty, for restoration for the backsliders. Hallelujah, for people to be drawn by your spirit. And so we lift up Marcia's children and her granddaughter, Debbie Biddick's family today, Pam Pulliam's children, Terry Adams' children, Peggy Fiedler's children, Jennifer and Brenda's, Brenda's family, Tasha Ray's husband and her sister, Mark and Caitlin and Judy and Mike's daughter, Jennifer, Josiah, Lori Arbo's mother. We believe you, God, that she's going to be restored to the faith. We pray for Carmen's daughter, Grace. We pray for Connor, Haley, Evie, Rose, and Carl, that these teenagers are going to know you and serve you. We pray for Art Chandler and for Sylvia's family and for Beulah's family this morning. Hallelujah. We believe you, God. Oh, hallelujah, to draw every sinner to you in the name of Jesus. Draw them by your spirit. Continue to deal with their hearts today. We thank you for being a long-suffering God. We pray against every form of cancer in the name of Jesus. We speak healing into every one of these people's lives today. Terrace Friend Beverly, Deb Clydens, Kim Gladden, Evelyn Marshall, Jamie Dixon, Debbie's daughter Jessica, Calvin, Josh Solberg, Lorelei, Caden, Jenna, and Tucker, these four children, Lord, who are suffering so greatly. We believe for their healing today. Lord, you commanded us uh, to permit the children to come to you. You took them in your arms. Uh, you care about their needs today, God. And we believe, Lord, that you're taking care of these children this morning. We pray for Terry Adams' friend for healing of cancer, for Kim Stinson, for Wanda Barnes, for Brother Williford and Brother Anthony Trimble, and for my Uncle Delbert today. Lord, you're the healer of every disease, and we give you praise. You're the healer of Parkinson's disease today, and we trust you for my father and my mother-in-law for Russ and for Tim today, and for every person that needs healing of Parkinson's. God, we bring that need to your throne today in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the mighty God. We pray for strength and healing and encouragement for Brother and Sister Perkins. Uh, we pray for those who are battling high blood pressure, of uh, one of which is James Pearson. Heal his body, we pray. We pray for Robbie North Northrop today, suffering with COPD. Bill Eldreth, Lord, needs your healing. We proclaim that for his life. Uh, we thank you, God, for Dustin Phelps coming through that kidney transplant surgery so well. We believe for his continue recovery today, Lord, that he's going to heal quickly. In Jesus' name, relieve his pain today and give him strength in this healing process. We pray for Abel Ray today. You see this grandchild of Sister Judy today. Lord, you see this rare disorder that he suffers with, and we believe you for healing today of PKU. There is no disease that is not already under your feet, and we believe you for that healing right now. We pray for Rebecca Mitchell's uncle, that he would continue to recover from this heart attack. For Rick House and for Emily Stanley battling with diabetes, and we believe, God, for Rick today, that you're going to touch his heart and make him completely whole. We pray for Leslie Pride, Lord. He needs that healing touch today. We pray for Tara Vaughn, believing for healing of her medical problems today. For Judy's daughter, Tammy, God, touch her body in Jesus' name. We pray for Renee, God, that the pain would leave her body even now, that her hips and knees would be restored. We pray for Pastor Holman's mother, Lord, that you would touch her in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I just want to take a moment and give you praise right now for being our provider, for being our healer, for meeting our needs, God, and supplying them according to your riches and glory. Lord, you're such a great God. You're a caring God. You're a loving God. You're a long-suffering God. We give you all the praise and the glory for what you're doing. We believe for healing of Crohn's disease right now for Michael Parrott. We believe for the swelling in the feet and legs to go down right now for David Nichols. We believe for Angela Yandel for her salvation and for her healing of body, soul, and spirit. 
We believe today for Shema, God, to recover from pneumonia. We pray for Sister Terry Adams for her healing and for her grandson, Ethan, who needs a touch this morning. We pray, God, for Phil and Karen Sampson and their family, believing for their healing as well. For, Ke uh, uh, for Kevin, or Kendra and Renato Ortiz, Lord, touch them right now in Jesus' name. We believe for continued and complete recovery. For Cody Robinette, Nick Searcy, Steve Skates, uh, Johnny Ray Hagee, uh, Ethan Harville, Gerald Geely, Dwayne's mother-in-law, Adrian Neely, Sylvia's daughter, Hallelujah, God, you have the answers for these, uh, for Rue and for Brandy Bryant and for Brandon Jolly. Each one of them, we believe, for complete recovery. We believe for these unspoken needs on behalf of Pam Bunch, for her family member, for Terry Bunch and Bill Eldreth. God, you see those needs and you know all about them. We pray for your peace and comfort today for the Woolard family in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for your comfort uh, for the Rogers family right now. God, that you would be with them in their grief. Uh, hallelujah, that their mourning would be turned to joy. Hallelujah, we pray, God, for uh, Larry Carter's family. God, that you would continue to comfort them and for the family of American Carter today, God. Strengthen them in this tragedy in Jesus' name. We pray for Matt and Michaela for Sally Waller's granddaughter and her family, for Bethany Hughes, for Mandy Plowman, for Cheryl Brenner. Oh, God, you see the needs in their lives today, and we pray your touch upon them. We pray, God, for Debbie Biddick's granddaughter, Katie, for her daughter, Jamie. Lord, touch them today. We pray, God, for relief from these wildfires in California. We pray for peace and comfort for the families of those who have lost their lives. We pray, God, for the extinguishment of these wildfires. We pray, God, for your protection of these that are on Travis Air Force Base today. In Jesus' name, protect Christian's sister-in-law and their family. We pray for Peter and for Pastor Alvarez and the Fairfield Church family. Protect them, Lord, in this situation, and we give you the praise. We pray you would bless each church's services this weekend. Let there be mighty revival breaking forth. Bless our VBS, God, and let children turn their hearts to you. Let them experience repentance, uh, baptism in your name, and the beautiful and filling of your spirit. Uh, we give you the praise and the glory for all that you're doing. And we give you thanks right now for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we've asked all these things. And we have confidence in you today to meet these needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you today. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday morning at 730 right here on Facebook Live. When we join together once again, amen, to study the word of God and to take the needs of others before the throne of grace. God bless you today.